Well, hi everyone, it's Nancy, the nurse practitioner, and thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel, Caregiver Success. I'm here today to talk to you about COVID-19 and the process for getting your vaccine. So we're gonna do a slideshow together and I'm gonna share my screen with you and, um, and then we'll come back at the end. But I wanted to start to go over some things that people wanna know and how we can best be prepared and well-informed so that we move on with this process. So I'm gonna share my screen with you now. Okay, so this uh, actual presentation is about making the COVID-19 vaccination process understandable. And I put this together over the last week. So I thought it'd be good for my channel and for the viewers to have some updated information, which I will feed um, every now and then just to make sure that everybody knows what's going on. Um, I have been a vaccinator here in Connecticut for the last month. It's been very rewarding to be part of the solution. As a nurse practitioner working in this area, uh, it's, it's wonderful to see how I can help in any way, shape or form. You know, you can help also if you wanna take some of your friends to get, you know, drive them or people who you know that can't get out easily. So we all can do our part to get um, involved. So by going through this process and doing many, many vaccines in, at this point in the last month, throughout all these uh, departments and facilities in Connecticut, I've learned a lot and also have been using information that I've been getting from the CDC and the WHO. The CDC is the, the Centers for Disease Control, which is your main spa space to go to if you have any questions. Uh, don't listen to the scuttlebutt, just get out there and, and watch the information and go on the cdc.gov yourself. As you can see, you can just go on and, and um, see updated information. The WHO is the World Health Organization and is also um, where I took some testing to make sure that I was um, savvy about the whole process. And I found it to be very interesting as well. So what you're gonna learn in this video is the history of the vaccine. We'll just go over that process. We'll go over the questionnaire and what the questions are that you'll be asked, some of the side effects you may have. And for all of those of you who don't know me, I do have a facebook.com um, page slash caregiver success where I will be putting some of these sites for you to go to as well as um, the form, which is the questionnaire. So you know what's on it and you can think ahead if you should be making an appointment if you're eligible. Okay, so next slide. Let's talk about who is paying for these vaccines. Well, if you're an American, your US tax dollars are paying for this vaccine at no cost to you. And if you do have health insurance, uh, many of the facilities are taking a vaccination fee uh, from, from, from your private insurance. So it's good to make sure that, and we'll go over what you need to bring for this appointment. For other countries out there, talk with your local representatives and know how you're going to get the vaccine. One thing I do wanna say that I found very, very interesting was when I was on the WHO site, I saw somebody on a camel, you know, with a cooler with the vaccines in them going across the desert. It just makes us realize how incredibly small this world is and that we're all in this together at this point. I found that to be a picture I will never forget. So is this vaccination mandatory? No, it isn't. It's up to you to decide if you wanna get this vaccine. I think we need to be well-educated, have all the information we need in front of us. I know many people are uncertain because it seemed to come out pretty fast. And so we're gonna go over those statistics and information as well so you have more information to work with. But if you're an essential worker or you work in healthcare, depending on your local state, it may be required for you to keep your job to get a vaccine. So you're gonna to need to check at your present job. And who can presently get the vaccine? Well, as you know, and many of you have friends and family members who are getting them. The CDC recommended in December, uh, December 13th, 2020, that the healthcare worker and the elderly are the first ones to receive the vaccine. Um, people 75 years and older are now getting the vaccine as of January 8th, and those residents in long-term facilities, and as well as first responders as part of phase 1A. And as you listen to your local news and from your local states, you will be finding out the next group, which is going to be 65 years old and up, frontline essential workers, individuals with underlying medical conditions, and, um, and that could be all sorts of ages. 
I actually had a woman ask me the other day if her 28 year old friend with cystic fibrosis can get a vaccine. And I told her that he's probably gonna be in the next group. So um, he's only 28. Okay, so let's just take a minute and go over what Moderna and Pfizer, which is called BioNTech uh, vaccines are composed of. You know, interestingly enough, just so you all know, we, you know, we're made up of many genetic particles, DNA and RNA, which are the two particles. And this vaccine is actually made up of a messenger RNA, which is a protein. And the vaccine contains a synthetic piece of it, a small piece of the SARS-CoV-2 um, genetic material. So part of this virus, the, the genetic material, the messenger RNA in it, has, has, is actually part of this vaccine. And th it instructs the cells in your body to make the virus's distinctive spike protein. And when you are vaccinated, your body produces copies of the spike protein, which alone does not cause the disease. And the immune system learns to react defensively, producing an immune response. And it's similar to vaccines in, in the, not by using the messenger RNA, which is uh, a fairly um, different um, vaccination, but smallpox, measles, mumps, rubella, um, pneumovax, all these vaccines were developed to actually help us to develop an immunity from getting, getting sick. And, and we're gonna go over that process in a minute. And so some things you need to know, excuse me, the vaccine came out relatively quick, we feel, but the scientists have been laying groundwork for decades about how to use messenger RNA and the technology to fight disease for cancer and even during Zika times, if you remember the Zika virus. So there was a groundwork being done in a foundation that was already built over 20 years ago. And when COVID-19 came to us in the whole, you know, as a global pandemic, it was, it was the foundation had allowed us to just take off running as scientists to find out how to use this messenger RNA in a different way and to help us with this disease. So some things you need to know also is that after you do uh, get the vaccine, you can get blood. So you can check um, with American Red Cross and other places just to make sure. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is 95% effective after the second dose, and it takes about two weeks after that dose to the second dose to get full immunity of 95%. And the Moderna vaccine is 94.1% effective after the second dose. So that's, that's pretty good. The Pfizer vaccine is being given for people over the age of 16, 16 or older, and Moderna is for 18 or older. And right now, children and adolescents are not um, eligible and they're not in the, in, the, in the group that's being used and should not receive the vaccine at this time. Okay, so let's talk about your vaccinator. You know, this has become a boots on the ground operation as you can well imagine. Here I am a nurse practitioner, definitely want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. So I immediately became involved and became trained and I'm finding it very exciting to be part of this. So many of us are licensed healthcare pr providers, practitioners. Um, there's LPNs, RNs, um, advanced practice nurses like myself, um, phys physician assistants, doctors, EMT, veterinarians, who all know how to vaccinate and are being trained in the actual vaccination process. And many of them are retired or not, and they're just volunteering their time. We had to be checked, our background check. I had to have a photo ID, which I carry with me. I was COVID tested by PCR. I had blood titers done to check my measles, mumps, rubella, my TB that I was not active, and I, that I had my hepatitis B series and a flu shot. So they're really checking my health status as well as my background check for a criminal record, driving record to make sure that I'm a good standing citizen to be helping as a vaccinator. I find that to be really great. One more thing, we've been trained how to um, go through the vaccination process and it's not just using a computer. You know, there's questions that we have to ask. We have to actually decide if people should be vaccinated or not. We have to answer their questions. So it's becoming very, very um, interesting as we go. So let's go over the vaccination process and what you should expect. Well, first, are you eligible to get the vaccine? 
um, you could check by your local State Department to learn. But when you go on this system that many of you are, are starting to learn, which is called the VAMS system through the CDC site, and as you can see, it's vams.cdc.gov is the website. As you start putting in your information, it asks you what your occupation is. And if you say retired, um, but your age group is over 75, you will be eligible to be getting your vaccine. But if you are um, a, a woodworker, for instance, perhaps, you know, um, or own a, a furniture store, you may not be eligible to get this vaccine. So what I'm trying to say is that you need to put in your occupation and it will tell you if you are eligible and it will either let you go further or it'll stop you. It also asks you on the site when you sign up about your demographics, your address, your um, ethnicity, your date of birth. And where I am working, which has really been great, is that um, the call center actually takes calls from people who do not have computers or do not have anybody to help them get on the VAM system and they are walked through it or helped so that it's all set up with an appointment and we take care of it when they get to the clinic. So that's been really great for them. Some more things about the vaccination process. One thing I will say is if you feel sick, do not come get your shot. First of all, we don't want to get sick from somebody coming into this facility while we're, we are having many, many people passing through. Eat and drink something before you leave home, okay? It's, it's really important that you do that. Uh, bring your picture ID, bring your insurance card, bring your own pen. You know, touching pens is also not great right now. So bring your own pen so you're ready to, to write yourself. And you're gonna have your temperature checked at the door. Wear a mask as you've been doing, and we're gonna be six feet apart through the whole process. It's better to wear a t-shirt, a tank top, something easy so that we can get your upper arm. That is where the shot is given intramuscularly in the deltoid muscle right here, like right up here, okay? So make sure that you're wearing something that we can get at that part of your arm. You're gonna have hand sanitizer devices all over the place. Make sure you use the hand sanitizers frequently. If you come with a driver, they can stay in the car. And uh, from start to finish, it takes about an hour so that um, just have them stay in the car and wait for you, okay? Be prepared to stay for 15 minutes or longer after getting the shot. So that needs to happen as well. So add that into your time. A few more things. If you don't have a driver's license, you can bring your uh, passport or vice versa. You're going to fill out a form uh, and a consent to sign that um, you are um, agreeing to get the vaccine. And you'll be asked if this is your first shot or your second vaccine. Um, and you would, if you had a vaccine before, then you're going to be having a card like this, which we'll go over shortly that you can present at the, at the window. Okay. And a big thing is let us know if you faint from needles because we certainly don't want you to have any injuries while you're with us. So this is what the form looks like. It's a questionnaire. This is a paper version of the form that you would be um, answering these questions. We ask these questions if you come through the call center because you did not get to electronically answer the questions online. So we're gonna go through them one by one together so that uh, I, we can answer the questions and show you what is going to be asked when you go online. So the first question is, are you feeling sick today? You know, I had a woman come in that had just gotten over a sinus infection. She said she still didn't feel great. Her head was full and she was just finished her antibiotics. And I told her, you know what? You don't wanna get this shot today. You can come back another day. And, and it, there, there were more appointments for her. So we just rescheduled her a week out. But don't come if you're sick. If you've ever had an allergic reaction that caused you to have anaphylaxis, this is a very important question. If you had hives, swelling of your face or anywhere in your body, respiratory distress, you might have wheezing and it could occur up to four hours after an exposure and you used an EpiPen, we need to know about that, okay? It's specifically important if we know if it's an injectable item that has caused this, but we'll keep going with the questions here. Now, have you had an allergic reaction to any of the components of the, the COVID-19 vaccine? Of course, you could say don't know or no because you have, haven't had the vaccine before and that will be one of the questions, uh, one of the answers to the question. 
are you allergic to um, a product called polyethylene glycol or PEG, which is found in some medications and laxatives like Miralax and preps for colonoscopy? And I say Miralax because people, especially in the older group, knows Miralax and um, they would know if they had a problem from it before. Another ingredient called polysorbate, it's used in facial cosmetics as dermal fillers, you know, to, to help wrinkles and stuff. If you've had an allergic reaction that caused anaphylaxis from that, and the reason why those two products are in this vaccine is this protein is fragile by itself. And in order for it to enter the cell, it needs to have a lipid or a fat bubble around it to protect it and make the cell interested in taking it in. So this nanoparticle of lipids, which is the polyethylene glycol and the polysorbate are wrapped gently around this mRNA protein and, and this way it gets into the cell. So that's why those ingredients are in there. And um, I just wanted to make sure you knew what, what you were answering those questions about. More questions. Have you had an allergic reaction to any injectable medications? Like I mentioned, oops, it looks like it skipped. You know, any injectables. This is more important than anything. We do ask you if you are allergic to food, pets, environmental or oral medications. I mean, I have seasonal allergies and, you know, if you're allergic to tree nuts or if you have problems with cats so and what happens, even if you've had hives or other problems from it, it's the oral or the seasonal or the allergic reactions. It's the anaphylaxis that we're really concerned about. And if you do have issues with that, we're going to either hold off on the shot and ask you to go into a hospital to get it, or we may consider giving it to you, but then you would stay for a good 30 minutes where we can watch you carefully for any reactions. And we are ready for the reaction. Many people who have EpiPens brought them with them, which I thought was really great, but we also have Benadryl and epinephrine handy in case we need to use something on the spot. Because you know we are not only just in a clinic, we are all over the state in different facilities um, giving vaccines. So we need to be ready for that. Next question, have you had a vaccine in the last 14 days? You know, a health prep professional who has just been onboarded to work, um, who had a flu shot, they're allowed to get their COVID-19 vaccine so that they can be onboarded, but they recommend not to uh, get a vaccine, uh, the COVID vaccine, within 14 days of another vaccine. It's just better not to do it. So if you can wait, uh, it's it would be better to wait through the 14 days is up. Have you ever tested positive for COVID-19 or have you been told by your doctor or health practitioner that you've had COVID? Um, I like to know that, but I also wanna know when. Uh, we're finding out that if you have had COVID and it happened just a month ago, it's really recommended that you wait um, First of all, you have to wait till the symptoms are gone and, and be past the 14 day quarantine period. And if you had convalescent plasma, it's really a good idea that you wait 90 days and also um, to getting the shot. And also, you know, you're, you're also developing your own natural immunity from having COVID. So you really want to give yourself a chance to build your own natural immunity. So 90 days has now been the, the, the wait period for getting that vaccine. So we will be asking you that question. Couple more questions on the questionnaire. Do you have a weakened immune system? Have you gone through cancer treatment? Are you immunocompromised where you had um, suppressive drugs that um, you take for maybe an organ transplant, HIV, anything else like that where your immune system is weakened? It's not that you cannot get the vaccine, it's just that you will not mount a response um, as well. So, you know, and that's typical also of older people. Older people are not getting many reactions from these vaccines, but the younger people are because their immune systems are so much more intact and ready to fight off things. The people in the middle like me, you know, I'll, I actually um, had a headache for three days after, a light headache. And I said, oh, I know what that was from and a soreness in the arm, but you know everybody had a different variant. It, it has been known that maybe the second shot is gonna have more, more side effects than the first. Do you have a bleeding disorder or are you taking a blood thinner? It's okay if you do. I like to document in the, in the notes section of the um, 
the actual um, VAMs so that I know that you're on Eliquis or Plavix, whatever. It's really using a smaller needle. It's also the importance of um, putting pressure on the arm a little longer so that you're not bleeding too long and you don't get like a, a black and blue hematoma. And are you pregnant or breastfeeding? It's found that uh, you should definitely check with your, your obstetrician if you should get the shot. They're saying that uh, the CDC is recommending that you do get it because the more pregnant you are or further along you are, the more side effects people are getting or symptoms from COVID, the actual disease. So they are recommending the vaccine um, from what I'm hearing. As far as lactation, we have no studies on that. Uh, but check with your obstetrician. And of course, data unravels every day. So this is just a timely um, informational video for you. You will receive a vaccination card and that's exactly what it looks like. Like I showed you, that's small, it fits in your wallet. And at the time of the, the vaccine, it's gonna have your, your name. We'll just follow along here. Your first name, your last name you're gonna put on the card, your date of birth. You don't need to worry about here the patient number. There's a sticker that will be put on, on there showing Moderna or Pfizer, the lot number, the expiration date, and which arm that you got the shot in, okay? And then your date that you got it and what facility you got it in. So this is my card. I'm gonna bring it to my second appointment. And actually the, the second appointment can be on the back where there's a reminder um, of the date because we are actually making the second appointments at the first appointment so that they know when and where to come back right away. And once again, this is what the card has, your name, you wanna put the vaccine, you wanna make sure you know what vaccine you've gotten when your next appointment is, bring it with you, keep the card in a safe place, don't lose it. If you do lose the card, we are able to download a vaccine certificate from the VAM site. And some people are even taking a picture of their card and keeping it on their phone. As long as you don't lose your phone, I guess you're, <laughs> you'll, you'll be good. Okay, there's also something called a frequently asked questions. I, I love showing this to people because they then they feel more empowered. They have the information for both the Pfizer and the Moderna fact sheets. You can go to this site below, the cvdvaccine.com. And I will also put this site on my um, facebook.com forward slash caregiver success page for you. Okay, we're almost done. So when you need the next vaccine, well, we found out as of January 21st, 2021, the CDC did change the criteria that you can get the second dose with a grace period of four days before it's due. So Pfizer's in 21 days and Moderna is 28 days. And you can get it up to the second dose up to six weeks after that first dose. So we don't have to go clamoring to get in on that exact date. We need to get as close as we can. If we get past the six weeks, we don't have to start the series over again. We just get that second shot. The, the uncertainty is we don't know how long the protection is going to be. And make sure that you, you know that you can't interchange the vaccines. You can't get a Pfizer and then a Moderna and vice versa. It's supposed to be the same vaccine each time. So after you get the vaccine and you gotten in your arm and you wore the right shirt and you did everything right, <laughs> you're going to go into an observation room. And that's where many people, you know, some people will be sitting six feet apart, chairs are wiped down after each time. And if you had a history of an EpiPen, like we talked about before, of a use of an EpiPen or anaphylaxis, you're going to stay for 30 minutes, then everybody else will be staying for at least 15 minutes for observation. So some of the common side effects from the, the vaccine, uh, both of them are kind of similar. The injection site pain is typical. I tell people just give it a nice massage. Sometimes they're getting it in the arm they use most dominant arm because if you use it more, it doesn't hurt as much um, as it gets absorbed. They may, may feel tired, have a headache, muscle pains, chills, fever, injection site swelling, inj injection site redness, nausea, feeling unwell, swollen uh, lymph nodes. So those are the typical um, FAQs that are asked and people want to know what will I feel. Those are the things I would tell them. And then if you notice that you have symptoms beyond 
four hours and you've left, it's important that we, re we do report our symptoms because as we develop data, we will have more from the masses as to what what is happening with these vaccines. And I think that's the scary part to most people um, as to that uncertainty. Um, but we'll go over some, some more information about that shortly. So VAERS, which stands for Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting, is the site that you would go to and it accepts reports from anyone. You, it could be from, if you have a problem, you could call uh, after you've left, it's good to report it to the facility that you had it and then we would report it or you can call directly to 1-800-822-7967. And I'll make sure I put that information also on um, my Facebook page so you have that, all right? And also the website. All right, so we're almost done. Uh, this is also really cool. You could have it on your phone. It's called vSafe. When you get your COVID-19 vaccination, ask your healthcare provider about getting started. You can go to vsafe at cdc.gov slash vsafe. And um, that will put it on your phone. And what you get to do is, is record what you've been feeling so that it goes right to the CDC. Okay, so as you know, precautions we all need to, to do to continue is, is we need to, um, you know, the drill. We got to continue to wear our masks in public because even though you got the vaccine, and you might go through the second dose and you are protected up to 94% or whatever, it doesn't mean that you are not a carrier and can be giving COVID to someone else. So we are just starting to explore how to get the masses all done so we all can go back to living our lives. And wearing masks in public is gonna continue, stay six feet apart, as you do in grocery stores, et cetera, wash your hands often. Remember to keep the faith, remember to keep um, the humor and, um, and, and, and don't, don't give up. Um, just want to make sure that you feel safe and have the information you need. So here's my vaccination sticker I got, I'm proudly wearing it. <laughs> we all have to make our own decisions about getting this vaccine. It's up to you to make that decision. And the more information you get, the better you'll, you'll feel about um, what your decision is. But stay informed and do the next right thing. And from Nancy, the nurse practitioner, thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel, Caregiver Success. If you like this video, please subscribe. I have lots of videos to help you and your family stay well. Take care for now. Bye.